Hey guys, welcome to episode 4 of the Mashable Southeast Asia podcast. Today, I have a guest with me who is Jaya. So Jaya, do you want to introduce yourself to yeah, sure. the people? Sure. Uh, my name is Jaya. Uh, I'm from the Adventures of Esper. Basically, I run the whole site where I do tech and lifestyle content over there. And I've been reviewing consumer electronic stuff for like about four years right now. Yeah. That's Lovely. So guys, uh, again, you can catch this podcast on Spotify as well as a video version on YouTube. So if you're at home, kick back, relax, grab a, grab a cup of coffee. And if you're driving, please do drive safe because today we are going to talk about a decade in technology and what's to come. Yes. Right. So let's go into a simple topic of technology and how it has changed our lives in the past 10 years. Right. So one of the things that um, is very interesting is that 10 years ago, I don't think our smartphones were something that, you know, we carried all around. We actually bothered to, you know, oh, keep track, where's my smartphone and all that, right? It was what? We were using a 3310. Yeah, pretty much. I think uh, the smartphones, we smartphones or the, that time of, I think in close quotation, smartphones we were talking about was more towards like feature phones per se. So I can still remember where we would be running around to find just that E signal on our phone to access the internet, like Yahoo or whatever it is. And, oh man, that's... and I, I think I also remember that last time, you know, even though we had a 3310, it still could download apps. But we oh, had yeah. to open up that magazine and then type a code inside and then send to this weird company and then they charge you on your uh, prepaid or postpaid line, right? And then you actually get that app as an MMS message. Oh yeah, that's right. And I think uh, that was the whole idea of like customization where we would send the same kind of code to get that weird ass images like on the front of the display. I think it's like as though that was the first app store in the world. Pretty if much. you think about yeah, it, right? Think, yeah, right. it is, it is, it is. But I think at the same time also, technology has changed uh, how we as a social creatures, right? We are technically social creatures and how mm. we have adapted. And I think social media plays a huge part in that, right? Because like 10 years ago, yeah, we, we did have like Friendster, we had MySpace and all that, but it wasn't very prominent until something like Facebook, Facebook yes. Instagram started coming out. And yep. a lot of people judge their worthiness on social media through... You know, the likes, the it's, shares. Yeah, it's just that. sad that like, you know, social media has gone to a point where like everybody needs to be validated based on social media. And uh, back in the day, I still remember like, you know, you'd go on Friendster or if people remember Orkut, which was from Google service. And, you know, that's all you do. Basically, you just add friends and just share pictures. And that was the end of the day. And then like as time evolved, like right now, like all social media is about is... Eval you know, evaluating your whole self yeah. like, and it's just sad like. it's basically getting validation yeah right? validation and, from, and from who right I mean yeah okay fine you have friends but you tell me all your you know friends on Facebook are actually friends yeah that, that's true yeah. I mean I'm sure people would have like about thousand two thousand friends on their Facebook but I'm sure that at the end of the day the people that you're going to meet in person is going to be like what 20 30 people right that's it. Yeah. exactly that's why yeah. I, I never really understood why you need to have a thousand friends on Facebook yeah right? me neither but I think, and also like because of because of social media, right? We change the way we socialize. Like I mm. realize now, a lot of people don't actually find like you know a, a a boyfriend or a girlfriend outside, right? Everybody is just swiping left and right. Oh yeah. yeah. Um. Well, I've never used uh those kind of apps, like especially like dating apps and stuff. But it's just sad, also again, uh, because the the whole point of like socializing, where you see face to face and then talk to them like heart to heart, mm. it's almost non-existent because. As you say, like all people do is just like swipe left and swipe right to see, you know, um, or who yeah. actually looks nice. And it's more purely like, oh, how he actually looks or how she actually looks. Uh, how, how can you judge a person from just from a picture? Exactly right? the exactly. point. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's really sad to actually see that dating has gone to that point. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, they, they are technology has like made it better. better right? yes, definitely. We, we, we definitely have seen yes. a lot of better things in yep. media. That's and, right. Okay. Okay. En enough of all these negative thoughts and all that Let, yeah. let's talk about technology right okay mm. so i think like we mentioned before smartphones right yeah. how it changed our lives and all that and what what, what do you think about smartphones and i want to know when did you feel that smartphones is something that you wanted like something that you actually need in your life you okay know? uh well i'm just gonna tell you like basically the whole story when i started using a smartphone um i think yeah pretty much it's almost a decade really uh the first smartphone that i owned was actually the samsung galaxy europa um it was the code the code name is basically gti 5503 and that was when i started using like the first smartphone and i realized like there's a lot of potential to it because it was already like futuristic you can do a lot of things and uh 
it's almost like having a computer in your pocket because if you remember the times where Nokia actually had a communicator series mm-hmm. where you could bring your work on the go kind of thing um the whole idea was really interesting with a smartphone and knowing the fact that Android can actually push its limit was really nice mm. but it has gotten to a point that now everybody uses smartphone like literally for everything not just for work or play but like we spoke earlier like for dating la like right. you know like, like there's so many things about it it, it was interesting because like for me the first time i actually saw a smartphone like mm-hmm. something that was considered smart yeah. was when my dad bought the palm oh man the palm, that w- right? those were the days yeah, yes yeah, yeah. yes it yes. was running on what a, a windows uh, mobile platform yes yeah and then it was so laggy mm. it was so buggy but yet it, it was interesting because you could actually download apps and and these apps are like you know word processing apps you had powerpoint apps yep, and that's all true. that which is yeah. very fascinating yeah. right and i think that was really one of the first push mm. but again it didn't pick up Right, yeah, it because, didn't because it wasn't for everyone. It was exactly. something that you know, if you are a business person, you would use that kind of thing. That's and right. If you are like you know, like a person like you and me, like we never needed mm, this kind of because things, right? uh, back in the day, I my dad used to have a Palm One, mm. and uh, I still remember the stylus where you have like a dedicated part at the bottom where you can actually sign or write or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then pretty much the only thing I could do was just play solitaire on it. And yeah, that's it. exactly. And and the rest of it was just like more business centric products, and it's like. I mean, what's the whole point of using it? Yeah, I mean, PDA, like, not everybody would want to own it. Anyway. Why Why would a person like you and me would exactly need it, right? the yeah, point? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay, I think smartphones, right? So, okay, when did a proper smartphone come out? For me, I felt that it wasn't. I, I know that iPhone was probably one of the the biggest kickoff for yes. smartphones, right? But I, for me, I feel personally, it wasn't until iPhone four, right? right Because okay. when iPhone four came out. It, it it didn't have that flat that that rounded surface at the back. It actually looked like a very sleek product, you know. It looked like a legit like a futuristic device. Yes. And I think it really sold the most is because uh if I'm not mistaken, right? Don't quote me on this, but Infinity Blade, the game, oh, came out yes. when iPhone four came out, right? Yes. And that I think really showed off the potential of yep. the game because it was mind blasting to see something that what had PS two graphics. Or like borderline PS3 graphics. Actually, if not better, to be honest. Yeah, yeah right. If not better, yeah. Because I still remember playing Infinity Blade 2 on my iPod 5th Gen. And oh my god, the graphics was almost as good as playing on a console. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that really showed the true potential of how a smartphone can be. And I couldn't agree with you more. Like, iPhone 4 was like a game changer to mm. the whole smartphone industry. And right. it really made every other brand out there like... It, it was a wake-up call for the other brands. Yeah, damn yeah. right, right. And yeah. and I think that's when also like Android actually saw that that trap, isn't it? And yep. that's when they finally decided to announce to the world that Gingerbread is coming out. Yes, that's right. right? And yeah. and after like what, for four generations of iPhones, you know, Apple actually had a competitor. Compet- and yeah, yeah, that's right. It wasn't a great competitor, I have to be honest, because mm. I tried a Gingerbread phone and it's mm. terrible. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I lived through like Eclair Gingerbread and then went to like Ice Cream Sandwich. Oh my God, yeah, that, that so wasn't... For me, great. I started off in Enclair, oh, right? Nice. Because uh, my first ever Android phone was the HTC Desire. Nice. Yeah, it's a very nice phone. Very I nice. love that phone so much. In fact, it's still working until today. Okay, I just cool. need to change the battery. But I think after that, when Android came out, it, it still didn't make a huge impact, right? And the thing is, you would have to buy a Apple phone. And when you're buying an Apple phone, you have to invest into the ecosystem. Pretty much. Yeah, right. And, you know, if you didn't have a Mac and all that, you know, your Apple phone didn't work very well because at that point of time, they only allowed you to connect to iTunes. Yes. Yeah, you can download an iTunes on, on Windows, but because I remember my my sister had a... I, I can't remember what iPod Touch was it, but it was a, some kind of iPod oh, Touch. Oh, okay. Right, 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 right. And we had so much of a problem trying to sync it up to, to uh, Windows. Speaking of which, I went through the same thing as well because uh, despite even having a MacBook at home back in the day, uh, I use a Windows machine. So which means when I want to um, copy all the music from the desktop over to my iPod Classic, if right. I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, oh my God, it was so, such, a, such an hassle because... By the time you get it sing, by the time you get it up and running, it would just take like as if like 10 years have passed. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so it's really annoying. Yeah, it was annoying. But I think it really, it, it had the potential. It mm. showed us it like, did. you know, what what could happen, what can happen and what mm. will happen. Yeah. Right? And and from that, stemmed like so many more things, right? Like That's true. Apple started taking out more devices. They started like releasing, uh, eventually they released the TV and all that. That's right. Right, yeah. and that really like push forward technology and I'm really grateful because if you realize right in, in just 10 years so much of technology has moved forward right Correct. that to the point that I think 
the iPhone 4 had what? 4 inch screen? 3.5 inch? 3.5, 3.5. Right. And then, and then it moved into 4. Then, yeah. then came and, the and 5 now, with 4.5, was it? Yeah, I think so. And in like, in like 10 years time, we have phones with 6 inches. Good luck, yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, I am not a fan of like really huge displays on a small body. I mean, I like the concept of it, but it has gotten to a point where the bezel is almost non-existent. Right. And, you know, when it comes to practicality, I mean, you need bezels on the side at least to hold your phone, right? Correct, yeah. And when brands like push it to a limit where, you know, oh yeah, now the display actually goes to the side, like when, uh, like, you know, the edge displays and stuff and whatnot. It's nice to see, it's nice to hold mm. and all. Um, but once you break, oh my God, that's a whole nother story to begin with. For, for me, I kind of like it is because, okay, so for me, I don't want any bezels. Like I, I do play games on okay, my phone, but I enough. just don't want any bezels, okay, right? Cool. And so when, when I first saw the OnePlus 7 Pro they released, mm-hmm. right? Like finally, one phone, one manufacturer that just decided to remove the bezels, okay? Like no notches. Well, Actually, I, I, yes, what? I am so into that because... I don't like the notch trend as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, I have to say, like, Apple was a really amazing trendsetter here. The moment they implemented the notch, everybody started jumping on that bandwagon. Right. Uh, which was like a little, uh, what in the name of God kind of thing going it's on. It's like a four more thing. Exactly. You think about it, it's like a four yeah, more thing. Yeah, it is a four more thing. And uh, in that case, well, Apple was winning clearly. Uh, but uh, I have to agree with the fact that OnePlus really did a fantastic job yeah. with their whole display. It's really good. Because I, for, for me, I feel like, okay, look, you you have the technology to remove the bezel, right? right. Like, why copy someone, someone else? Someone else, yes. Right? Just remove it. Because the fact is, like, now we can watch a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, mm-hmm. you know, on our phones. Yep. Right? And do that. Like, that's what the format was format intended was a, for. Yes, exactly. Right? That's you, true. If you are intended to watch a movie in 16 by 9, okay, you watch it in 16 by 9, you don't need a bezel. That's and plus, right. with all these these notches and bezels, they weren't implemented pretty well. I remember when the first time a, a bezel, uh, sorry, a notch came to an Android phone. Remember we had, uh, someone took a picture, it was a leak image. This was like, I think three or four years back. Okay. Right? Someone took a picture of a leak image and then showed that the, the, uh, the, the data icon the H or the LTE was being blocked by the notch. Oh, right. You remember this? Yes, but I they, do remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they never wanted to mention who was this manufacturer. Manufacturer, yes, correct, yeah. correct, correct. I we know. I do remember, yep. We know. Yeah, we know who it is. But, but we won't yeah. say names. Yep. But we know. Yep, that's right. right. And and I think, like, it, it's great that, that technology is, is evolving, right? Yep, but correct. But there is also the fact that these companies are trying to innovate where you don't need innovation. That's true. You know? Yeah. yeah. So, like, for example, I think w- probably one of the best innovations I felt in, in a smartphone was the dual speakers. Like, oh, it man. It made so stereo much speakers, of sense. St- stereo speakers was the bomb. Especially when uh, HTC One hit the market yes. with the fantastic the, the stereo speakers. One M8. Exactly. and That phone. Ooh. Yeah, that phone had the best speakers, hands down. And honestly, it's one of the very few brands that I really miss because they are pretty much like they don't exist anymore. And yeah. it's just sad to see like a brand that had like so much of innovative feature, like the dual like stereo speakers. Uh, it's just not that. No, even, even honestly for me, if... if OnePlus didn't appear in the market. market. Yes, I think I would stick with HTC, man. Yeah, like me, honestly, me too, yeah. it's so it's such a beautiful phone. Like they they know they understand minimalism. That's right? true. And and they don't do this notch nonsense and all That's this. That's right. And another brand I think, in my opinion, really gets the credit is actually Sony because um, knowing the fact that Sony has been making fantastic phones over the years, where they may have like loose uh, you know track like in the past few years or something. One of the recent announcements, basically the Xperia 1, uh, which I'm currently using as my daily driver, uh, shows that they are not following like any sort of trend, but they rather kept like, okay, you know what? I'm going to implement what I feel it's good and what I feel the consumer would need. And in that case, they actually had a really, you know, like a decent amount of bezel to hold it. Mm, the yes. 21 by 9 aspect ratio, it's a very odd ratio to begin with, but doing multitasking on that is fantastic. Mm. And uh, it's just that it shows that that phone is like, it's not going to follow any sort of trend, but they stuck to their own ideas. So seeing brands like uh, Sony or HTC in the market, it's really nice, but it's just sad that they don't get the recognition as they used to get back in the day. I think it's at this point, right? Like where where do you think smartphones can go? Just to, um, just to wrap this up, where, where, where do you think smartphones can go? Because honestly, for me, I feel like 
Okay, we have no more bezels, right? We have yep. three cameras, right? A uh, uh, main sensor, you got a telephoto, telephoto lens, yes. and you got a wide-angle lens. That's that's more than enough, right? Yep, I mean, that's, that, right. that's literally the amount of lenses that you can have on have a on camera. A phone, yeah. yeah. Okay, so where where do you think smartphones will go from now? In my opinion, I just feel like smartphone has actually reached its peak. Mm. And uh, one thing that we have actually seen in trend, I think both of us, I, we could agree with that, is foldable devices last year. Right. So yeah. foldable devices are becoming more of a thing um, I mean, we have to start with the uh, Chinese brand called Flex Pie. Was Flex Pie, yeah. yes, Flex Pie, oh. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, interesting concept, but it didn't pan out really well. But later on, we actually saw from manufacturers like uh, Huawei with their flex, uh, flexible display, right? The Dis- Mate uh, X, Mate X, yeah, was mm. it? Yeah, it was a really interesting concept, and followed by Galaxy Fold, which is also another fantastic concept. Um, well, again, uh, if I want to bring Sony into the equation, they actually did it with their tablet series, if you remember right, the tablet yeah, yeah, S, yeah. with their foldable thing going on. But yeah, I think foldable devices is where future is at because carrying a dual display device in your pocket is so easy to use. I used the fold- uh, Galaxy Fold for about one, two weeks-ish, and it was really great. Um, but it's still it's still uh, relatively new in the market, so which means it's going to take a lot of time to actually perfect the whole area of it. When you know, and it's gonna take at least like three to four years. For for uh, yeah. for me, I think foldable phones, right? Okay, it's it's kind of like a novelty. No, novelty, yes, it's a I very agree. novelty thing, I right? Do okay, agree. because like what what is foldable phones trying to solve? That's right. Uh, even even uh, to be honest, I for one, I do carry like a tablet and a phone with me, and personally, I do prefer carrying two devices rather than carrying everything in one because it does feel like a novelty and knowing the fact that there's going to be a lot of app with like ratio issues Mm. and whatnot because let's be honest like android app ratio isn't particularly great and uh, with that said there's going to be a lot of issues to come by because people are going to be like finding ways like oh how much how much of a like big display i'm going to cram it in then uh, what else can i cram it in and whatnot so i don't know it's just more of like a party trick kind of thing. Right. Like a device like you would just show it off at a party and then that's it. You call it a day kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Now, I think for me though, what which foldable phone or device I'm looking forward to is actually Microsoft's uh, oh, yes. Surface, uh, what, what are they calling Surface it? Surface Duo? Was Duo, it? Yes, right. Yes. Surface Duo. But I want the Android version. Oh. Right? Um, because I feel like, okay, so you can actually use that device as a phone as well as a laptop, isn't correct. it? Correct. And, and the fact that now... It feels, I don't know about you, but it kind of feels that Android is trying to create an ecosystem yes. com- to compete against Apple because like recently they just announced that they want to release something like an airdrop for for uh, Android phones. Yes, correct. Right? So Android, and it would support Windows as well. Obviously through an app, but That's right. nevertheless, I mean, mm. it doesn't matter, right? The fact that you can get airdrop features on a phone, phone that yes. is not an iPhone. Yep, that's right. Yeah, which is, I think, damn amazing. And I think from then on, and also like the Chromebooks, right? The Chromebooks are improving tremendously over time That's and right. time. And if that eventually kicks off, then that would be a struggle of ecosystems, right? Like, which one would you choose? Like, why would you choose this? And and the fact that Apple has been there for such a long a time, long time, right? yes, correct. Is it possible that we will eventually see a different ecosystem in the world? There, There is a very high possibility for that uh, because... We have seen like other manufacturers, like say for instance, uh, Ubuntu tried to have a mobile OS, but it did not really pan yeah. out. Yeah, nah. uh, but mm-hmm. but I have a feeling right now, uh, we have we we're gonna have a really good competition because Microsoft is also slowly getting back into game. Yes. Um, say for instance, one of the interesting app that you can actually find on the App Store is called um the Phone Companion. So all you have to do is just install, and then once you pair it up with your Windows device, and voila, you can literally sync everything from your Android device over to your PC. Yeah. Uh, that's basically like uh what using an iPhone with an uh MacBook, and then yeah. you just keep everything. It's, it's a track. very rudimentary yes, exactly. ecosystem, isn't yes. it? Yes. Uh, so uh, I can see why um where where Android and Microsoft is all heading towards to to unify the whole system, and chances are they might be collaborating together to make it a whole system mm. rather than competing with each other. I think I want to see that rather than having like, oh, you know what? I actually have the best features here. And then the other brand goes like, oh yeah, no, I actually have the better features here. Right. Yeah, because the competition is good, but at the end of the day, like consumers are torn apart, even including myself as a consumer. I'm torn apart choosing like which ecosystem I want to go for because at the end of the day, you're going to go through like so much of hassle like, oh, you know what? I need to get like storages that only works with this and not with that. 
you see where I'm going. Right, with this right, right. So it's it's a little. Yeah, I'm. I'm. For me, I think it's exciting to yeah. see that Microsoft and and Android are actually working together, together more yes. than we expect they are. Right. Yep. They're actually like tremendously trying to. I don't know. I guess push Apple under the water or something. Right. Like two against one kind of thing. Pretty yeah. much. Which is which is very interesting, lah. So I I hope. I really hope because I I really love the Android uh, ecosystem, right? Uh-huh. I mean the the platform itself. Yes. I I like the freedom that it gives, right? That's right. And of course, I understand that that's a preference thing, but and I could easily move over to Apple if I want to just to experience the ecosystem. But because of the flexibility, because of the freedom of Android, right? Like this is something that I'm really looking forward to yep. in the next coming years, right? Mm-hmm. Whether or not we will be getting an Android ecosystem that is at least at least on par with Apple's. It doesn't need to be better. better as yes. long as it's on par. On par, because, that's fine, yes. Because correct. people need to understand that an ecosystem really helps you, you know. It, it really changes your workflow, how you work, how you use your devices. And it's really great if you haven't experienced it. Like, if any one of you can can go out there and try to find a, a Apple product with an iPhone, with with an with an Apple Watch, Watch. and actually experience the ecosystem, it's, it really changes your perspective, perspective on, on, on Apple, Apple yes. being like this this tyrant that tyrant, is like, yeah, you know, that, you know take your money from true. you and that kind of thing, right? Yeah. A lot of people need to understand that sometimes when you buy, you buy into Apple, you're not buying the product, product you are buying the, the software, uh, exactly. the ecosystem, the yes. software. Yeah, that's right. And that's something that people still need to understand, mm, I guess. Mm. But again, you know, pricing wise, you know, I, I, I still disagree with the pricing thing, yeah. right? I still disagree, but I really have to give them props to their software. Software, and yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to a topic that I'm actually more interested in sure. computers. Oh, nice. So when. We first found computers and and devices like this, right? It was all pre-built, right? It was very rare to find like uh, someone who like built their own computer and that kind of thing. And nobody really thought about computers other than it is for office use. Oh, like, yeah, why right. would you have a computer at home? So we had devices that that you could buy from shops, and everybody was like, "Yeah, this is a computer." And and we always thought like the olden days computers were like as big as well probably this room that we are shooting this podcast in right mm, it used yeah. to be mounted to the walls and that kind of that's thing that's right yeah and and it is really nice to see that now computers have become something very different right very much more personalized right. but back in the day like just 10 years ago that kind of thing you you could find more people buying pre-built computers than you could the di- diy computers that's right? right because i mean speaking of uh, DIY, uh pre-built computers right I'm sure like everybody can relate to the days where you would see like pamphlets in your newspapers that actually says, oh, you know, we have this specs for 1,300, right. we have this specs for 1,500, you know. And then it was relatively cheap because people, all people need was like a computer that can run the basic needs. And that was basically it. A, and A Pentium 2. Pentium 2, Pentium yeah. 3, Pentium 4. Then came on the Centrino and whatever, yeah. So Good old days. And then uh, after that, so like laptops started coming out. And laptops also right. were like this made of plastic kind of bulky things, yep. right? That we used to use last time. Yeah. But it's it's um it's very interesting because uh so I, I found this article, right? I actually want to tell I want to uh tell you about. So this uh Kotaku, mm-hmm. right? They actually talked about uh what are the best laptops that um back in 2010, if I'm not mistaken, this article was, yeah, so right. best laptops of 2010. Okay. And it's it's very, it, it made me laugh a bit because of how they mentioned about the Alienware M11X, right? Oh man, yeah. So this is exactly what they wrote on their, their website, right? Okay. So it's a small but powerful, this 11-inch beast, <laughs> okay, packs a 1.2 gigahertz Intel Core i7-640UM processor. Have uh-huh. you ever heard of a 640UM processor? Nah. Yeah, even for me, so I was like, yeah, huh? nah. usually we always hear Intel used to have four digits, right? Digit, because yeah, it's exactly. to tell you the generation Correct, of it. But this true. has three digits. So how old is this thing, right? And and what's interesting is, right, they, they said that they put an NVIDIA GeForce GT 335M. Man, I, th- I think the only M processor that I've ever used in my life uh, or maybe started using was the I think it was the eight five O. Right. Oh, uh, it was it was so old that I think I I I had a had a uni mate that brought an Alienware so and that had a mobile Nvidia graphics so basically the M at the end of the the serial number is is basically to tell you whether it's a mobile processor processor or not, or not. yes yeah, correct right. that's true yeah uh, mo- mobile GPU mm-hmm. so and then uh, they 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 said this the graphics is packed into a miniaturized version of Alienware's I don't even know how to say this word. Cameras, kick, gaming rigs. <laughs> okay, so you get a customizable backlight and effects for showing off. 
plus NVIDIA's graphics switching uh, Optimus technology, which is basically what we have now, where now, you, yes, know, when right. you don't plug it in, it's not going to use the onboard use graphic yeah. kind of thing, right? Uh, which means this 4.6-pound champ can last around six hours on a charge. Oh man! Okay, for, oh, I, yeah. I, I'll give it to them lah. Six hours on a gaming laptop is actually pretty impressive, pretty, right? Pretty darn good, if you ask me. Because yeah. I mean, trust me, any gaming laptop these days barely even can last more than ninety minutes. Right. Yeah. But okay, so I think we come back to the point, right? That that back in two thousand ten, okay, an Intel i seven sixty four zero UM and uh, Nvidia GeForce <laughs> GT three three five M were the best at its time. And now we have what the 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 RTX 2080, 2080 super super ray tracing, yeah. And now uh, AMD is now trying to like push uh, in uh, Nvidia really off graphic. the yeah. off the cliff by taking out the 5700. Oh my god! Oh man! Yeah, the game is getting much more intense. And the best part about the whole laptop game is the fact that I've never owned a gaming laptop up, up until about two three years ago. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like back in the day, like I think I still remember like my first PC actually ran a. Um, Intel, uh, Intel Pentium Two or Pentium Three was it? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then followed by, I think the closest thing that I could talk about, like a where I where I was able to play game on a PC, was actually using my Acer Aspire V5, which came with an uh six fifty M. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, G four six fifty M. Yeah, I, yeah, I that. think that was the time where they didn't use like much of a generation. Thing going yeah, on. they yeah. never really counted the generation. Yeah. So for for me, I always wanted a gaming laptop. Yes, right? until I was um because why is the last time I remember I was playing uh Need for Speed Most Wanted. Oh, the good OG game. Most Wanted. Okay, yeah. not 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 this whatever that is out now that is just <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I was playing Most Wanted and that and and I was running on a Pentium two processor. Oh, do nice. you know that the starting screen, the splash screen, took fifteen minutes to load for me? I literally okay. Went to the toilet, okay, did my business, business, took a shower, okay, went back to my bed, like, lied down on my bed for a while, read a book, and finally the game loaded. Wow, okay. okay so I think back then that was, like, a faster Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was impressive. Yeah, that was already was damn like, impressive. I'm like, 15 minutes, woo, the game loaded. Yeah, yeah, yeah the I game think... loaded. And then, uh, lucky for me, beyond any other loading skins, beyond Same. that was pretty fast. Yeah, that one was pretty fast, but yes, exactly. Because I saw someone had a gaming laptop and ran that same game on it, uh -huh. and it was so fast, the so game fast, was yes. so fast. And then, I always wanted a gaming laptop, right? Since I was like, I think I was like, 14, 15, 16, like mm -hmm. that. I wanted a gaming laptop right. until I actually went to uni. Okay, now this is where I saw one of my one of my uni mates. They he had an Alienware as well. Okay, don't remember the model, but I know it's a 15 inch uh, Alienware. Okay? okay, so okay. back in maybe that was uh, 2011, 2000. Oh, could be actually this. This uh, I don't even probably. know whether it's, it could be yeah, the M11. If that, I write. Yeah. Okay, but the thing is, uh, at that point of time, uh, what is this came out? Um. What was that Need for Speed game also? It was, was another it the shift. No, no, it was the it was a really good Need for Speed game. Hot, Hot Pursuit. Pursuit. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So Hot Pursuit came out, and I thought it was like amazing, right? And then this guy he bought his laptop. And he was like, "Yeah, man, this laptop is like six k, you know." And I was like, "God damn, man, this is uh, that's expensive. Expensive, yes. Like my computer is what at that time was like two k and two k, yeah. And, and, and most also yeah. like I I still remember my laptop. I think it was the uh, Asus K forty three. Right, right. Uh, that laptop was about like what one point five two k ish, and yeah. that was it. And 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 yeah. for me, like I was playing games on it, like no problems, right? I yeah. had a graphic card, I had a proper processor proper, uh, this time. Yeah. And then this guy is like, what's a six k laptop? And I was like, God damn. And then he opened up Hot Pursuit, on it. Pursuit yeah. and then I realized that the game is lagging. Oh yeah. And I was like. So okay. beyond that, that, that's when like all my dreams of buying a gaming, gaming laptop, laptop was like, nah, like I'm completely. done. <laughs> I'm done with this. I'm just going to stick with my computer mm -hmm. and then, you know, play on my computer. Because I realized that obviously if, if you want a game, mm -hmm. right, you, you don't, don't get a gaming laptop. Gaming laptop. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, but it also like depends on personal preference. Of course, that, definitely right? is like yeah. where, where you stay, like your, your exactly, yeah, space where you, you stay. Else. Yeah. And then if let's just say if you're someone who's a student, who's always on the move or something like, like myself, uh, where I actually have to bring my laptop every time on the move one of the pain in the butt would be how heavy the gaming laptop mm. is so uh but still it's it's really nice to actually carry it all around yeah uh, just to make sure that you can get your work done but you just got to make sure that you don't forget your charger if True. not yeah you're so done and, and i think the same can be said for gaming laptops right because like uh even though it, it was a gaming laptop but the fact that you could play you know anywhere, anywhere. It, that was amazing yeah, though it, it actually opened up to a lot of possibilities i mean because if not, gaming laptops wouldn't be a thing today because mm. it has become so portable that every every single manufacturer out there have actually crammed in like super powerful graphics card into system that is thin as like 
almost like a notebook. Of yeah, sorts? I mean, yeah. like uh, recently, I think uh, you know our our friends at uh, Asus, Asus right? yes. they took out the Zephyrus G14. Yeah. Oh, oh my man. god, that's a gorgeous laptop. Yeah, I mean, okay, fine. It has that dot matrix thing that yeah. behind that. Uh, I think they I call it know. the anime. Was it? Yeah, anime. Yeah. <laughs> Cheesy name, but okay. <laughs> it's very cheesy. Yeah. Even I, I, even I told that also. They were yeah. like, what do you think about the name? I was like, yeah. it's, you know, it can't, it, people are going to make fun of it, right? They're like, yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> they, are, they are cool with it. They don't care. Yep. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, like that that was a thin laptop and it's only 1.6 kg and it's yes. running this this new fourth generation uh, Intel, Intel. Uh, sorry, uh, AMD processor, which apparently has beaten Intel's uh, lineup Very own already. lineup. Yes, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah. Intel is like, AMD is really killing Intel, man. Back a- to back. AMD literally came out of nowhere with the whole Ryzen series. Yes. And they are making so much of, so many headlines out there. And they have actually shown like so much of uh, improvement and, you know, like how much their processor can go and how much they can push their limits in just a very short span mm. of time. And I really love where they are going. Yeah, a lot of people always used to kick them down. And I guess yeah. when the Ryzen came out, they were like, hey, you know what? Yeah. That's it. We are done. We're done with this with this bullshit and everyone mm. calling us crap and all that, right? And then uh, for me, I was always using AMD. I yeah. know it overheated. Mm. I know it was that. But I, I, it was cheaper, right? And at that point in time, you couldn't afford like expensive computers. Truth be told, even when I was actually owning a laptop, mm. um, AMD processors were relatively affordable yeah and also somehow it was able to handle a lot better at times compared yeah. to an intel processor in my opinion a- especially when it came to gaming gaming ex- as exactly so that's a thing so i was always an amd uh fanboy mm. back in the day um if you remember the athlon processor that yeah. was like one of the few processors i also used i've come by and uh and then when ryzen came into the market i'm like oh my god this is just fantastic yeah I mean, and uh i think one thing that i really love about amd is the fact that they actually have um, made their processors like so good to a point that now anybody can own a gaming laptop because yes. that is something that I really love because back in the day, I'm sure like we, if we were to, I mean, uh, speaking of that uh, Alienware M17X, which was like 6,000 uh, bucks, I'm sure none of us would have able to afford it back then. But now you can actually find a gaming laptop as low as two, five, three thousand 3,000 ringgit, which Definitely. is really, really great. Like even, in fact, uh, uh, I'm, I'm really glad that a lot of them are moving over to AMD using the... Exactly, yeah. The, the AMD uh, mobile That's processors, right. right? Because it is actually very affordable. affordable and it's so yes. powerful. Yes, a right? powerful, uh, uh, efficient, power efficient as well, which is really good, mm. yeah. So that's I'm, I'm really glad that that from laptops, from like this bulky laptop, mm. you know, that now we're getting like thin laptop. In fact, like like I just tried out the the um, uh, Expert Book B9 from, from Asus. Okay, right. Which weighed only 851 grams. Oh, dude! Nice. It was amazing, nice, man. Nice, like when nice. when I picked up this laptop, okay. So, uh, they they were like it was there, and then they were like, yeah, this is a laptop you can try it out. I picked it up, and you know, you you when you pick up something, right? You always think like, okay, I'm gonna carry something like has a little I more have, have like, to it, right? Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm right. gonna yep. like you know put some bit of effort, effort into this to carry yep. this. And when I lifted it up, it was just like went up straight, and I was like, dude. And then I, I was like, this is not like this dummy model, right? That you know, you go to the phone, phone shop yeah. and I right, got the dummy model sitting exactly. down there. Yeah. It was like, they looked at me and they were like, no, this is the laptop. That was impossible. I opened it up and then Windows was like, hello. Nice. I've not experienced the whole Asus Expert book, but I've actually used all the other Ultra books. Like, say, for instance, one of my personal favorite is their Asus uh, Zenbook series. Like the smaller than A4, uh, like the whole right, campaign, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The, because I use the a ZenBook Thirteen. It's so small, it's so compact, it's like really light already, and comes in at one point two kilograms, which is also fantastic. But another laptop I think also gets the attention for being super light is actually Asus Swift Seven. Oh yes. Oh my yes. god, that laptop is so light, but is. There is an issue with heating. Yes, right? it does. And it there's does a lot it. of performance yeah. issue with that. It laptop, does have right? a, like a little bit of performance issue here and there, but the fact that they made an extremely ultra thin laptop because it was more towards like it's a productivity centric laptop. Yes. I mean, what more you can expect from it, right? right? right. Uh, when and when consumers uh, are gonna go push it like applications like Lightroom or something, then of course it's gonna get like yeah, hot that's in nobody's true, that's business. True, yeah. yeah, but then then again, you know, you you would expect people would do would this, do like, that like, exactly. Like eventually, yes, one correct. day someone's gonna be like, oh damn, I need to edit this picture. Right, like yeah, my that's laptop true. and all that. Yeah, that's true, that's so true. I feel like you know, yeah, you can show off these thin, thin laptops and mm. you know, there's these super light laptops that's and all true. that. But if they don't, they always need to do something a bit more, more than what they were told to do. Correct. You know, that's the point of a computer, of, yes, right? Because right. It, it needs to evolve as you evolve. Yeah, uh, because like I think uh, back in about like four, five years ago, I was actually using a Dell Attitude and uh, using a Dell Attitude, it was fine. Like you know, getting like just like productivity centering, but when I started editing video or doing any pro content creation tools or using it, 
Oh, it was really an issue to pump things out of it. And so that's when I actually switched to a Asus ZenBook Deluxe, which mm, mm, you mm. can actually uh, attach an external GPU while making right, sure that laptop yeah. is like super thin and light because I love thin and light laptops. It was fantastic. And that was when I really appreciated laptops like those. And uh, then I moved to a gaming laptop. Yeah, so like the Asus ROG Strix. Mm. So had a dedicated graphics card. It was really great, yeah. So, it's, technology is not only like, be, you know, meant for smartphones, smartphones for computers yeah. yes, and that kind of thing, right. right? Like, we've seen a lot of differences now, especially like in just a normal household, right? Now, we have like smart appliances. That's true. Right? When would you ever think that you would on your bathroom light by just walking through it or maybe just through your phone? Phone, yeah. Right? How, like, now we can, you know, we, we live in a in a very humid country, right? That's like, true. It's, it's like in the middle of the of the center of the world, the world which yeah. means like it is hot as, as yeah. hell and it's Liquid. nice that that eventually we can go home and we can use our phones to turn on an aircon and that kind of things right yeah. and i think that, that that's pretty cool because it, it really changes how we we live as people right whereas in the last time all we used to like you know oh we have to come home and then like we have to oh slowly turn, turn on, on yeah, everything this and, that, and, and that. then like and then you it. don't know if like someone's in your house because like that at that point of time we didn't have alarm systems we exactly. had like a padlock you know, yeah we, that's true that's true yeah, and anyone can just jack a padlock or just jump over your gate but I think you know it's, it's really nice because like we never thought appliances would be smart right for example would you ever think that your rice cooker needed to be smart no no not at all right yeah now I think you can actually uh, scan the barcode of the rice cooker uh, no the rice packet and then it will actually tell you oh you need to heat this rice at this exactly. particular you need this amount of water yeah, this amount, this of, amount of things heat. and then that's like super cool and I'm like wow okay that's something right. I want in my house it's so cool yeah, uh, yeah. any kitchen appliances, appliances if you yeah. think about it can be smart of course we don't count the knives and all that kind of yeah. thing yeah right Still but, chop your food. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. I think I'm sure. I, I don't think you need a lightsaber knife, yeah, la, right? Yeah. 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 Like, I hope Although that'd be cool, la. Yeah, be like cool. Having a mini lightsaber, like you can chop. But your I really food. hope technology doesn't yeah. go that far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah I hope but yeah, I mean, like, um, so uh, again, like one, one of my friends' house, right? He has a dustbin that is a smart dustbin. It literally knows when you're approaching it, and it can it can detect the things that enter into the into dustbin, the dustbin and yeah. tell you that, uh -huh. and 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 segregate the the trash. Oh, yeah. That's so, cool. for example, right. right, like it knows a, a a can entered inside. So you know this is for recycling, uh -huh. right? And then uh, you can actually program it to set, like for example, if I throw um, bio, you know, things that are bi yeah. you know bio biodegradable, biodegradable yes. items. Yeah. So they they actually can segregate that as well. You know, in case you want to keep that to I don't know, like fertilizer or what. Oh yeah, you right? can actually just. Put it, reuse, recycle yeah. kind of thing going on. Yeah. Which, which, which I think like that's pretty cool right now. E even though a lot of people don't see what technology is doing, right? Like technology is still there to... It, it is saving the world, right? Yeah, it is in a way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, speaking of like the whole point where uh, the home appliances are making things easier. One of the things that I would really focus on is also elderly, because when, you know, elderly, when they get old, they tend to, they cannot do a lot of tasks as well. So in that case, like smart appliances have actually made things easier. Like mm. say for instance, like, uh, take an example like cleaning your whole home like uh, who would have thought there would be a robot vacuum literally like roaming around your home knowing literally like oh this is the living room this is the dining room or this is where the carpet right. is and all yeah so it's really fantastic and it really helps a lot of people like save up a lot of cost in hiring a maid or whatever and yeah it has made things a lot more easier yeah, uh, yeah. so it has helped a lot of people so that's fantastic uh, there was an old folks home right that, uh -huh. that was given the I don't know if it's that that robot dog from Honda. Robot dog. Uh, yeah. There is one from Sony as well. Sony, is Sony right. also yeah. had an. Uh, well, they call it the uh, Ibo or Ido or something. Yeah, that, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, so this this uh, they actually right gave these dogs these robot dogs to old folks home. Oh nice. Right. Okay. Yeah, and and for them to actually like you know because you know having a pet is is a bit hard. Yes, that's right? true. And so if you have a robot dog, then all you need yeah. to do is just. Plug it in and charge it charge up, it, right? Yeah, and it's fine. Yeah. And it's very, it's 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 nice, like You know, to see these kind of things that you yeah. to see that technology has has changed. Changed, yes. yeah. Even though people think that you know it's redundant, but for some, for 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 one way or another, right? You find the use for it. Yes, because like I think uh, the robot dog is a very interesting uh, concept because uh, when uh, especially people at old folks' home, they would want this uh, whole companionship this this somebody to kind of you know uh, accompany them you know because they would feel lonely and robot dog is one of the best thing that could exist or any kind of robot for the matter because it, it it also kind of behaves in a way that a normal dog would and it also learns at the same time um 
Although despite the fact that it's an um, AI based, mm-hmm. uh, but still it's really nice because yeah, you don't have to do a lot of chores to actually maintain them, but just to just charge them up and then let them run around mm. and then take care of them. And yeah. it, it also can can teach kids teach, how to program exactly, and yes, all that kind yes, of thing. Yes, right? that's that was, true. Okay, so we're reaching close to the end of our time. Yep. Now, just a simple closing question. Where do you see technology going? Now, I know we spoke about smartphones already and yep. where it's going to go, but what about computers? What about smart appliances? Where do you think we will go from here? Or, you know, just technology in general because it, it, it feels like it's come to a point where we don't know what is going to happen next mm. because it seems like what is going to happen has already happened. Yep, that's and, right. And, you know, obviously there's talk about AI taking over the world, but let's put that aside, aside because yes. like, that's very far-fetched theories. That's true, that's true. Okay, but, you know, where do you think technology will go? I mean, for me, it's going to go even uh, further in the future. Uh, say for instance, it's going to get more, much more streamlined. It's going to be much more unified. But also at the same time, um, any kind of like innovation like this also come with a cost, like a price, you know, on life and stuff. So one of the things that I personally relate to is just that um, the movie Wally, e right? Uh, if you remember, like, you know, we have that spaceship where everybody just sits around and then just move yeah, around, yeah. In, you know, in, in those chairs and that axiom. Like, I have a feeling we would, we might would uh, head into that kind of future where everything is just automated and all you have to do is just sit down and then your food would just arrive at your lap. I mean, it's already at your doorstep. It's okay. only a matter of time somebody I, just put I, it on your lap. I hope I will leave the world before that happens. Yeah, be I, same. Yeah, I don't want that to happen at all, but it's just that, um, if there are certain tasks that we can do it by ourselves, I, I think we can do it by ourselves. And the task that, that's really hard to actually execute, like say for instance, uh, manufacturing plants and stuff. Mm. Yeah, that is one area that, you know, a technology like this should really advance. And the uh, same case goes to uh, healthcare as well, because operations has gotten to a point where it's now much more precise with robots and all these equipment. So I like to see those kind of innovation where it's much more practical and useful in the future, rather than just like, you know, having like, uh, I guess, like smart lightsaber or knife or something right. like that. Yeah, it's just like pointless. It's just that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm, okay, so I'm going to give you some quick questions uh, uh, right. and you give me some quick answers right. Right, okay what do you think about 5g uh too early right yeah way too early yeah even i feel it's too early yeah. i mean why would you need one gigabit connection on your phone are you running a server on your phone that you need that much of speed and here's the thing a lot of people are hyping about it but here's but the thing is that all these tasks are done in control Control, yes, exactly. And we don't know what is it for. We, That's like, right. we, 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 you still haven't given us any other use cases other than the fact that now I can make a phone call without any latency. latency I and can downloading a, a movie yeah, in it, just 10 minutes. Yeah, That's I mean, it. I, hell, I can download a movie back at home yeah. and then just use a remote to, thing to send it back to my phone. phone right? yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah. Okay. And another thing is, even 4G is still not too mature in Malaysia. So Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like it's not even matured here in yeah. a lot of Asian countries. Exactly. And you're so, running for 5G. Japan yeah. is trying to do 6G. Oh, God. Anyway, so uh, next thing. VR and AR. Where is that going? Oh, boy. Um, this is a really tough question because... It's going somewhere, but also nowhere at the same time. Yeah. Um, AR, like we, I mean, I think it's about like almost a year plus right now where where we have barely seen anything yeah. other than like, you know, all those uh, party tricks like um, the Jedi challenges on the Lenovo AR system where you use a smartphone. And then that's basically it. We don't see any uh, future progression on that. Um, I guess it's, it's almost as dead right now for the mm. moment. Because there is no practical use to it. Yeah. Um, but if I have to choose one, I would choose augmented reality over VR. Yeah. Definitely. Even yes. I so feel like augmented reality, especially in a lot of fields, yes. can really be helpful. That's right. Because um, so uh, Microsoft showed off also augmented reality and Correct. how um, you know you can actually uh, model out the the person's that's body. That's right. Correct. Uh, the Correct. patient's body in in real time. Time. Yes. Right. And uh, that's basically augmented reality. Right. Mm. You're giving uh, it's augmenting. Your exactly. Current reality, yes. Right? And, and uh, speaking of which, also Google also has their AR kit where you know where you have like tools to like measure things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those are like basic yeah. things, yeah. but uh, this is where I think uh, it's gonna head into. Like, but I, I think it's just that people don't never really like see into the future. Yes, like a lot of people right. don't really see in the future, yeah. and and that's something that is probably needs to change also. That's right. right. Companies can innovate. Companies mm. can take up something new, but the problem is if you as a consumer don't see. But I guess, again, it also falls upon the company Con- too. Companies, to yes, that's but, right. Uh, but most of it, for me, I always feel most of it falls upon the consumer. Mm. If you are not interested, 
you are not going to learn. Learn, exactly. Right? Yeah. If you have the interest, then you will learn. learn. And you know, that, that's something that I hope that a lot of people starts to see. So let's hope that, you know, technology is going to be more exciting. Yep. I know it feels like it's a very stagnant stage now, but you know, there's a lot of news coming out. We That's still right. haven't seen Samsung's uh, graphite, graphene battery. Graphene batteries, Graphene yes. battery, you know, and then uh, even Asus now has dual screen, screen laptops, laptops. Which, which actually makes a lot of sense. Yes. I don't know about you, but I think it makes a lot of sense, you know. And then we have like so many more other things. We have, you know, uh, well, of course, 5G is coming out. You know, we have phones that are becoming thinner, thinner more lighter. lighter. You know? yeah. Again, foldable phones. Foldable phones, you know, yeah. yeah. Definitely looking forward to see that. Yep. But of course, Jaya, thank you very much. Thank you so much for, for having me For taking your time. Hey, no worries. Yep. Very happy to see you again. Likewise. Long time we have not met, right? Yep. So again, guys, if you want to listen to this podcast, you can find it on Spotify as well as a video version on YouTube. And with that, guys, I will see you in the next podcast. All right, thank you so much. See ya.